So what is going on guys, NandoPants93 here with another video. And before we get started in the video, I'm just gonna put up my new Twitter handle right here. Definitely give me a follow. I, def I wanna use it more to interact with you guys as the channel grows and begins to bring more following. I wanna know what you guys wanna hear. And from what I know, Twitter is a little bit better to interact with you guys. So again, give me a follow whenever you can. Let's keep going with the video. And today is part two of the top 15 hidden iPadOS features October 2019. So we're just gonna hop into it. You guys already saw part one, which was the first five. This is gonna be part two, which is the second five, and then we'll have one more part three, which will be the last five of the 15. So for the first one, so for the first one, it's a little bit better to use it on your iPhone than it is on the iPad, because it's very rare that you're using GPS on your iPad to get you from place to place, but the feature is there and I like it. And you can also take a look when you're using it on your iPhone. So this works for, Apple Maps, which I don't really use too often. You go into Maps, and as you guys can see, I have a destination set, but now there's a share button down here, which allows you to share your ETA with you know friends, family, like let's say uh, you're supposed to meet somebody at a restaurant in 15 minutes, they ask you, hey, where are you? You just hit the share button, and it'll tell you them exactly where you are and how much longer it's gonna take you to get to them. So that's a nice little feature makes it a little bit easier for people to see where you are, a little easier to share instead of sitting there and texting, hey, I'll be there in 15 minutes, I'm on XYZ road. So it makes it a little bit easier for people. Number two is a nice little security feature that Apple added for, for the mail application. And you can do this on iOS and do it for your phone also. So obviously I'm not gonna show the phone capability because this is an iPad, but if you go down and go to the mail portion of the settings, there is now an option to block sender and it gives you options on what, to do, on what it is. So if you, if somebody sends you an email that you've never gotten before from, from a URL that's never been shown, you have the option to do nothing with it, like let it go into your inbox, mark as blocked and leave it in inbox or it's totally moved to the trash so you don't even see it. So I'm, I leave it as blocked but I also leave it in the inbox because I wanna see, sometimes I get emails from people that I don't know through work and they reach out to me with something important so I don't wanna just, block everybody and I do the same option for the phone so I don't block every single unknown caller but you do have that option now with iOS 13. Number three is right here mask capabilities guys so I've done plenty of videos and in a lot of other videos I've had little snippets on mouse support right so I'm a big fan of Apple's or iPadOS's new mouse support this is my MX Anywhere S2 I highly recommend it it's about 50 bucks in my opinion it's the cheapest high-end mouse that you can buy the only downside to it is the micro USB to charge it. But other than that, I love this mouse, right? It lasts, I said five years in another video, somebody corrected me, it does say 70 days, but as you guys can see, it's still at 50% and I've never charged it and I've been using it for a few months now. And it's been stuck at 50% that entire time. So anyway, that's mouse support. And to show you guys real quick how to do it, you pair it the same way you would pair any other Bluetooth device, as you guys can see it's right there. But the only way to activate it is you gotta go to accessibility, touch, assistive touch, and make sure that that is on. So if you turn it off, the mouse is gone. I have to go back in there, flip it back on, and boom, there's a the mouse. And again, you can customize the keys to do certain things. For instance, I have this to go volume up and down. This button right here takes me all the way home. As you guys can see, and they're very customizable. And this mouse, for instance, has a nice scroll wheel, which works with some iPad apps, as you guys can see right there, and it knows where on the screen you are. But for instance, this mouse has a cool little sidetrack where you go to the right and to the left to scroll right and left. That is not supported in iPad. So there's a few things you're gonna have to sacrifice when it comes to using a mouse. So another big one, guys, has to be the new download manager for Safari. So if you are to go and download something through Safari, you get a little extra icon over here which shows that it's downloading and then you can then you can open it in the Finder or download it and save it into your Files app. So the Download Manager and the Files app work together very, very well and I'm a big fan of how it all came out and it gives you again that idea of this is becoming more and more like a laptop replacement and you can unzip files within the Files app and you can do a bunch of other nice little things which is really, really awesome. And then last but not least is audio sharing. So I've spoken about this before. It's an awesome little addition to the iPad ecosystem and to the Apple ecosystem. Let's say you're on a plane and you're the only one that has an iPad, but with, you're with you know, a family member that wants to watch the same thing you're watching, but you don't wanna do one AirPod for you and one, one AirPod for them. So now with Apple headphones that have that W2 chip or W1 with the old ones, 
you can now audio share. So if you have Apple AirPods, you know, the Beats Pro, the new Studio Beats that came out, you can now audio share with up to four people and all watch the same, or all watch the same thing on the same device with different headphones so you don't lose quality of audio. So that's an amazing new feature, which I haven't been able to try yet because I only have one pair of AirPods, honestly. And I don't have a second one just laying around. So when that time comes, I will definitely do audio sharing and show you guys how it's done. But ideally, you just go into the settings, hold it down, hold it down, jump into Bluetooth settings, and there's an option to audio share when you're watching a video. It's really, really easy to use and it's very, very useful. So I recommend trying it out, guys. So those are the five step or the five new features that I wanted to talk about in part two. So stay tuned for part three. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. The channel's been going amazingly and I really, really appreciate it. And hopefully after this video, I'll be able to finally do my video of how much a small YouTuber makes with 2000 subscribers. But you guys have been wanting to see it and I'll definitely show it to you guys. But that's gonna be it. Until next time, peace guys.